to hide this okay so that it doesn't like really messes with us so guys when it's talk about structure uh, so one thing that you can literally notice here i'm looking for my text you can see that we have what you have low here we have low here and we have highs here okay, let me just do this we have highs here. So, okay, so guys, now we can see that the first step is uh, us identifying what? Identifying our lows and our highs here. So, you can see that we have lows and what? And highs here. So, what is it that we have now? We have this um, low here, but these low are higher than these what? These low. So, we call this what? Lower high here. So, we have what? Here? We, we have lower highs. Okay, let me just cut this tool. We have uh, lower highs here. As you can see, guys, we've got nice lower highs. And then here, we've got what? We've got uh, higher highs here. Because why are we saying these are higher highs, guys? Because now, these, uh, these highs here, as you can see, these highs here, these highs are higher than what? Are higher than these highs. So that's why we say these are our heart. Uh, higher highs. So what is that we have here, guys? We have lower highs continuously, higher highs, as you can see, lower highs as well. Okay, guys, uh, this is, is like a pain and messing with me. So we have these lower highs here. So one thing that I want us to discuss more, guys, is that these lower highs here, we only declare these to be lower highs once price breaks above these higher highs here. Once price is able to break apart, then that's when you can say we formed what we formed lower highs. But what do I mean? But once price is still in between these areas, this is not is not dictated as what as lower highs until what until price breaks above and then closes above this area. So now we know that we're looking for price to what to come and test here. But uh, that's yeah, that's the for another day. This story for another day, but as you can see, guys, this structure. If I can just put my pen line here, you can see that we are in some sort of like that a bullish trend. So here is when we're talking about what about uptrend. So this is what we call uptrend, and then also again, guys, what we have something like what we call a downtrend. So it's exact opposite of what of this. So a downtrend is having what is having these highs here, and then we have lows here. And then we have lower highs here, then we have lower lows, then we have lower highs, we have lower lows, lower highs. Okay, um, let me just get this. Lower highs, lower lows. Okay, price is just messing with me a bit. Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. So this you can see that guys now, if you can just even put in my trend line here, you're gonna see guys, that we are in some sort of like what a bearish trend here. As you can see, we are making let me just get this tool for me. Um, as you can see, guys, here what do you thought you have? We have these highs here. And then we have what? We have these lows here. It's lower lows. And then what is that we have here? We have lower highs. And then here we have lower lows. Uh, lower highs. 
No, no, no. Um, so you shouldn't be confused, guys. Here, lower highs, uh, lower lows, and lower highs. So, guys, as you can see, it's still the same scenario that we're looking out for on our bullish trend or uptrend. But now, the difference is that we are looking in some sort of like what a downtrend. So, we only say these are lower highs because of these, what these. Excuse me, these uh, low, lows here, they are lower than what they are lower than this high. So that's why I say these are lower highs. But then here we have lower lows, we have lower lows. You can see because of we are lower than this low. We are lower than what than this low. So yeah, that's basically why we call these lower highs and lower highs. That's basically the theory behind. So we only be able to identify these as our lower low once we see price breaking and closing below what below this era as still as long as price is still here what is that we have guys we have a ranging market so we're ranging between what between these highs uh, let me just okay sorry about that guys i just yeah we are ranging between these highs and what and these lows here so until price is able to do what break below then you continue to add with the trending market because of if price is still here anything can happen price can just reverse and continue to push to the upside so we can't really say um, it's a, it's a, what this is a confirmed value that's why you find many traders when price breaks here they start to want to sell this is not a good time to start looking for it for selling opportunities but then i'm going to discuss as to why i'm saying that and in all in honesty you shouldn't be looking for selling opportunities here so you should you should wait for price because here price is is, is, is is like oversold here so you don't want to be selling a price that is already oversold another um a structure that we have guys is what is what we call ranging market so let us let me like down, down here Yes. So uh, now I'm uh, just gonna uh, hand over to what uh, to uh, change of what of the ranging market. So when you talk about the ranging market, is some sort of like a manipulation sort of type of thing, whereby we see price pushing up, pushing down. It's not like the, the price is not trending up or to the downside, but it's just in what in a range whereby um is not showing clear direction where price or market wanna go. So what normally happens, guys, in a ranging market is that we tend to see, uh, we see what we see price just playing. Uh, okay, guys, I want to remove this. Sometimes I forget that I put this tool here. This tool here. Sometimes I forget. It kinda kinda messes with me a bit, but yeah. So guys, you can see that a ranging market is when the market is just playing in between, right in between these highs. And what in these lows here, not breaking. So we, I'm really not a, a kind of person who's like wanting to trade this. But uh, there are people like, okay, um, I'm looking to sell once price comes here. I'm looking to sell once price comes here. I'm looking to buy. I'm looking to buy. I'm looking to buy. But then I really don't want to be active in any sort of this whatever that is happening here. What I normally wait for, guys, I wait for expansion. So expansion is price breaking up at these highs or breaking below this low. Once price give me that expansion, I'm not gonna enter. But I'm gonna wait for price to come to my what to my discounted price and then continue pushing to the upside. So now this tells us that now the market is doing what is trending. So that's the only reason, or that's the only scenario that will make me wanna be involved in what in this market. Once I see price pushing up, breaking up, breaking above these highs, or it can break below these lows here, guys. It's just that uh, we are looking at in some sort of like an uptrend, but it can also do in a downtrend, can still be the same scenario. So um, I believe, guys, uh, I did explain the structure and how it plays out. So uh, I want us to go to some sort of like a real chart. Yeah. I want us to go to a real chart so that we can identify some bit of more structure so that people can't really get confused. So guys, one thing that you can literally notice about a structure is that we have two types of structure. We have like major structure and minor structure. So when you talk about minor structure, it's a structure that is inside structure. So what, what do you mean, Mamba, when you talk about that? Like on a bigger time frame, you can say, okay, we just have this, what? 
this push. But if you can just go to smaller time frame, you're gonna find out this pullback was some sort of like a downtrend on a one minute time frame or on a five minute time frame. This was some sort of like a downtrend. This was like a downtrend. But overall, you can see that price is pushing up. It's pushing up. So this is what we call minus trend. So many traders they tend to get lost in between this structure. As of now, maybe only a bigger time frame they're seeing an uptrend. Then when they go to five minutes. You start to see this now. They be like, okay, maybe trade price is in it down, and then they start doing that. They start looking maybe forward for selling opportunities. Then price continues to push up, and so on and so on. So one thing that shouldn't be happening, you shouldn't get lost in what in this what in this time frame. You should be able to wait for what for those uh, smaller time frame buyers to change and align with higher time frame buyers. So guys, one thing that you can literally just see here, and I'm just gonna highlight super super nice and simple. One thing that you can see is that we created these lows here. Right? So um, when I talk about structure, guys, that's one something that is so clear to me, not something that I'm just gonna search for. So if about that. Okay, sorry about that, guys. My mic will start some tripping. But guys, if you can just see here, you can see that we have this push, we have a pullback. We are about to have this push, we have a pullback. We have this push. We have a pullback. So this pullback was so deep that you see that it was able to break here, but we still haven't broken above here. So for me, NZD is still some sort of like in a bullish trend, even though you can see that uh, this is what I can literally say, some sort of like a minor structure, but you can see that price is now turning to the downside. But until we break below this area, I'm not gonna be looking for what. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, I tend to forget a lot. But as still as we are still trading above this area, guys, here, I'm not going to be looking forward for any selling opportunities or whatsoever. Or oh, one thing that one can do, guys, something say, okay, remember, maybe you missed a point here. You can see we have higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, and then this area was broken. You can also look at it like that and then say, okay, maybe price was coming to our what? To our premium era to look for further more what? For further more selling opportunities to the downside, one can also do that. That is absolutely, absolutely fine, guys. We can still look at it like that. That's what I'm saying. We look at striker in different ways. Let's say uh, we're looking at striker in the second scenario with the second person. So one thing that you can literally notice that we made these what these lower highs here. We made these lower highs here. We made these lower highs here. We made these lower highs. Yeah, I wouldn't be certain about this, but definitely I would about this. Let me just move about this. I would definitely I would about this. So one thing that we can literally notice is now we push down, we broke below here. So this is that break of structure. We created a new what? New lower lows here, created lower highs here. And you couldn't break, as you can see here, we couldn't break above what above this high, created new lower highs new lower lows, new lower highs here. Yeah, so we're pushing to the downside. So now, what is that we should be looking at for guys now? Because you can see that price is, is some sort of like in a downtrend. We should wait for price to pull back, step into these areas and do what? And continue pushing to the downside, probably completing this area here. That's what we should be looking at for what, uh, on, what on our ends of DUSD. So here guys, as I, I'm always saying, guys, this is not a good era for us to be buying because of you can sell price is already now looking like it's oversold. So we should look forward for price to come to our our, to our premium era before looking forward for selling opportunities. But then, guys, we're not going to be discussing about how to look for those selling opportunities. Today, we're just discussing what discussing structure. Of which I do believe uh, this video is going to be very, very valuable to you guys. So. Yeah, guys, um, yeah, I'm just going to use this example of in the GSD alone because I believe this was so clear. Uh, but uh, the next video that I'm going to be doing, we're going to be talking about uh, lower time frame confusion of structure because people can get so confused between these two time frame, like looking at like some sort of like a weekly daily time frame. And when they go to like, <clears throat> excuse me, go to like 15, five minutes, they get so confused. So we're going to be talking about those, what? Those were lower time frame confusion. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, yeah, it's me, your boy, Final Chamamba. I'm out of the building. Let it be peace in the Middle East with our brothers and sisters. Be safe.